In this video, we will discuss sample line groups. If you'd like to follow along with this video, please open the file 1302 sample line groups.dwg located in the training folder as discussed in the working with this dataset video. A sample line cuts across an alignment and can be used for creating cross sections. You use styles to control how sample lines are displayed in a drawing as well as their associated labels. Once created, they are placed in a sample line group. Regarding the settings and styles, if you go to the settings tab, there is a sample line category, and this is where you will find the different settings and styles for sample lines and their associated labels. I already have one here called road sample line. If I double click it, this style simply has two component types, the line and the vertices, and what layer each one should go on. As far as any associated labels, if we go to the label styles, you'll see that there are a few in this drawing, but if we just go to the one called section name, this one here will simply display the sample line station value as shown right here. So how do you create sample lines? If you look to the home tab, profile and section views, there's a sample lines tool. When you select that tool, you are prompted to select an alignment. You can also right click to open the dialog box and choose the alignment that you want to create sample lines from. Remember, a sample line group is a child of the alignment. I'll select our proposed alignment and click OK. In the Create Sample Line Group dialog box, you can give this a name and we'll say four cross sections. And the reason I'm calling it this is that you can have multiple sample line groups for an alignment. And in the next section, we will be discussing how to actually get earthwork volumes. You will need a sample line group to create earthwork volume reports. What you can also do in this dialog box is select the data sources you want to sample. So when looking at the available data sources, I do not want the storm network just yet, as well as the existing one as well. And as far as ground surfaces, I only need one combined existing ground and I do not need the finished ground because what I'm going to use is the quarter model as a quarter section to display in my cross section views. And that is defined right here. I'll also toggle off these other two quarter surfaces as I do not need them. One of the other things that you may want to consider is defining a layer for the actual entity itself. Although the section style and the code set style will define the different layers the components will go on, this layer defined here can globally control what layer those objects go on. I'll select over here and I'll just simply give it a suffix of EG. Click OK. And for this one, I'll click in here and we'll give it a suffix of dash corridor and click OK. These are the sample line styles to use and these are the sample line label styles to use. Click OK and you now have these sample line tools with a jig appearing next to your alignment that you've selected. So some of the things that you can do right now is I can actually click here to edit the name template that will be defined for the name of the sample line. By default, it's the sample line station value. I can also select a different alignment if I want to. And then here's the name that we just created. What you can also do is you can choose the method by which to create sample lines. Let's use an existing polyline to create a sample line. I'll select that option. And what I already have predefined in this drawing is a polyline that is perpendicular to this alignment and it's to signify a driveway. There are many instances where you might want to actually see a cross-sectional view to show a grade for a driveway. I'll go ahead and just click on this and then right click and it created a sample line from that polyline. Let's say I want to create another one based on some points in my drawing. So I'll go ahead and select the pick points on screen option. And what I want to do is create one at the center line of this driveway. Now I don't have an existing polyline, but what I can use is the mid between two points snap. And I can snap between two graphics here, which will give me my center line. I'll do the same thing for the bottom. All I'm doing here is doing a shift right click to get the snap override menu. And then snapping to the two objects that I want to get the midpoint between. I'll press enter. And then let's just press enter again and now we'll see that we actually have two sample lines. So if I select any sample line, you'll see a bunch of vertices appear. If I wanted to simply change, let's say the station value, I could simply move this along the alignment. 
But let's say I want to actually extend this to the intersection of the alignment here to actually show the center line of the alignment. I could try and snap and get there, but what I can also do in the sample line contextual tab is I can go to the edit sample line command. When I select that, I'm prompted to pick the sample line, so I'll go ahead and pick this. And you can now go in and change some default settings here. So for instance, if I want to change this to 5, I can change that to 5, and it'll go all the way 5 units to the right of the alignment. If I change this back to 0, it now goes to the center line of the alignment. Note that you can also change the name here, as well as snap to the northern and eastern if you wanted to. For now, I'm good. I'll press Escape. And now I've got that new addition to this sample line. Although that's great that we can actually create specific sample lines and we can actually define each individual station, we obviously want a batch way to create sample lines. Let's go back to the sample lines command. I'll select my alignment by right clicking and then selecting it. Now notice how we are not prompted to select the sources that we want to sample. Because we already have a sample line group created called four cross sections, we are not prompted to sample different sources. So in the drop down here, what I can do is select by range of stations. And in this dialog box, what I will do is just define the parameters to actually go in and define the sample lines. So you can say from alignment start if you want to, but let's say we do not. So we'll say false. And we'll go over here, click once, and then we'll pick on this button here to access the alignment information. And let's say we want to begin at this station value right there. That gets us close, and we'll go ahead and say you want to start at 150. Then for the end of the alignment, we can say true in this case because we do want to go to the end of the alignment. Now you define the swaths. So right now, by default, these are using my default command settings. But I can go in here, and as a little tip here, what I can do is just pick on that pick button there, and I'll just kind of do a general snapping from the center line to the widest swath within my corridor model. So that kind of looks like about, let's say, right here. So I'll just snap here and go somewhere like that, just to get a distance. So we have 100 feet. So let's say we want to make this 100 feet to the left and 100 feet to the right. You can define the increments along the alignment that you want to sample. And the different sample controls, such as the PCPT, if you had any super elevation points, if you want to create a sample line at those different locations. So I'll go ahead and say true to the PC and PTs and super elevation critical points as well. Click OK. I press escape to initiate it. We now have all the sample lines for this alignment. As we look here, we notice that some of these are not actually going beyond the daylighting. So to change these, there is no global way. But what you can do is you can actually select these. I'll just select a few here just for demonstration purposes. And this is an AutoCAD functionality, not a Civil 3D specific functionality. I'm going to make these what's called hot grips. By doing so, I can just hold the shift key down on the keyboard and select the arrow because that's the one that I want to actually be able to change. By selecting them like that, when I pick one, they will all stretch. If I didn't make them hot grips, they would not all stretch. Only the one that I actually selected would actually stretch. So where do sample lines live? Again, they are a child of the actual alignment. So let's expand my alignments category, go to center line, go to bypass, and in the sample line groups category, I have my sample lines right here. Let's make this a little bit bigger. And you'll notice that I can actually individually select different sample lines. But if I want to change anything global, what you want to do is right click on the sample line group itself and go to properties. So let's say we want to actually change the code set style that will be used by this sample line group to generate the sections. I can do this in a global way or I can do this individually by selecting each individual sample line, but most probably you want to do this in a global way. So I'll select the sections tab and then in the style column I can go in here and change the actual code set style that will be used for all sample lines within the sample line group. Right now we do not have any section views or material lists, so that's why nothing is being displayed. Notice how you can also change a group label if you want to change all of the label styles that are being used by the sample lines. 
Click OK, and now those changes have been made. Again, if you need to change any of the sample lines or you want to remove a specific one, you can do so by simply selecting it, deleting it, or by selecting it and actually modifying it. Again, notice how I can actually change this to be non-orthogonal. This is pretty cool. This would actually update the section to show exactly where this sample line is being projected along the sample sources. If I want to change this back to orthogonal, simply right click and then choose the make orthogonal command. Now one of the other really cool tips is let's say I want to delete the rest of these sections that I'm not going to be using at all. So if I click right now, you'll notice that, and this is before I run any command like the erase command, if I just pick in the drawing, I have some options for fence, WP for window polygon, CP for crossing polygon. I'll simply type F enter, and then I can select all these sample lines that I don't want. And sometimes you have to run it again. So I'll just pick here, F, and then simply press delete, and that would delete any of the sample lines that I do not need anymore.